Hey everybody, welcome back to Urology 101. I'm James Farrell, you found my video blog on common topics in urology. Today, we're talking about medicines that are used for BPH, otherwise known as benign prosthetic hypertrophy or hyperplasia, enlarged prostate, or just big prostate with urinating symptoms. And we're gonna talk about why patients are put on the medicines, what benefits you might get from it, what are some of the side effects, and then what are some of the concerns to look out for so that you can take that information back to your doctor and hopefully have a better visit going forward. There's a lot of data out there that shows that patients aren't always comfortable with medicines they're prescribed. And so the point of this video is to make sure that you feel more comfortable, right? Because anytime that we are a novice and we're talking with somebody who has a professional degree in something, most of us walk out of that situation and go, man, I don't know, I got like 5% of that. I can't remember what we talked about. Well, that's what the point of this video is. Let's try and make sure that we learn something so that you can get a better benefit out of your future visits and feel comfortable taking the medicine you were prescribed. Now, there are three main, oh, and before I forget, if you're kind of lost on what BPH is, on the symptoms, general treatments, anatomy, all that stuff, I have a video on that here on my Urology 101 channel. Please go take a look at that. There's lots of great information and try not to fall asleep. Sometimes it can be dry. Sometimes people are like, why don't you smile more? I don't know, I'm trying to remember all this stuff to get it out at the right speed for everybody. So sometimes it's dry, bear with it, it's good information. Okay, now let's get back to the, this topic. There are three classes of medicines we tend to put people on when we talk about BPH. I'm gonna sit in one of the classes today and there are gonna be two other videos in the other classes. The one here are called alpha blockers and they tend to be the ones that we start with. They're called alpha blockers because they block some smooth muscle that is connected between the bladder and the prostate at what's called the bladder neck and the prostatic urethra or the part of the urethra that runs through the prostate. So if we look at a model here, this is your bladder, uh, this is the prostate, and right between the two of them is where that bladder neck is and the urethra runs through the prostate. And so the point of the medicine is to relax that muscle so that it opens up the diameter and more urine runs through it. And so that you have less sensation of a weak stream or intermittent stream or hesitancy or standing at a urinal for 15 minutes wondering if you're supposed to get paid for your time. Hopefully you go less frequently and that your quality of life improves because these voiding symptoms are less. Great thing about this medicine when you start it, usually if your symptoms are because of a big prostate, you will start to feel better pretty quickly, almost like one or two days afterwards. So that's a, that's a good sign that if you've been on it for three weeks and you feel no difference, that, that the symptoms are not from a big prostate. At any rate, I hope you're getting a benefit. Now, when do we have people take these medicines? Usually we have people take it at night. And the reason we start off with that is because the older versions had some of a blood pressure effect because the initial types of medicines that were used actually were blood pressure medicines. So I gotta imagine that like four decades ago, they started these things out to lower blood pressure and all these 80 year old dudes came in and were like, hey, I'm peeing better, this is amazing. And some very smart people in pharmacy said, man, we can make some money on this. Let's get something selective. So the current ones are more selective for the prostate and the bladder neck. But the reason why people can feel some lightheadedness is because they used to have a blood pressure effect. Now, different ones have different levels of selectivity. So if you notice, you may actually be able to start taking that medicine over the course of a day or during the day and not have some of those lightheaded symptoms. Your body tends to acclimate to that, but for the first handful of days, take it at night, don't be surprised if you feel a little lightheaded. When you sit up quickly, just give yourself a few seconds to slow down, take a few breaths, and then get up and move around. Now, the one most likely to cause that is called terazosin. So let's run through exactly which medicines are which. All right, up here. There we go. Flomax is a brand name and the generic is Tamsulosin. Uroxitrol is a brand name and the generic is Alfizosin. Rapaflo is brand, Psilidosin is generic, and terazosin is old enough that there is probably not really a brand ever available still. Now. Terazosin is the one that does have a real blood pressure effect and you tend to escalate dose over time. Uroxitrol and Flomax tend to be pretty similar in selectivity and may make you feel a little lightheaded. And Rapaflo tends to probably create the least of that, but will create the most of another side effect that many guys know of, which is called retrograde ejaculation. And you say, wait, wait, what? Yeah, so it means that your ejaculate goes into the bladder rather than out the urethra when you orgasm. So what you're gonna see is just 
less ejaculate. And maybe that happens in 10 or 15% of guys. The numbers are a little iffy on who's who, but that's a common side effect with all of these medicines and it happens throughout the class. Maybe the least common with terazosin, maybe the most common with Rapiflo, because Rapiflo is the most specific for that area. Now, the reason it happens is because your ejaculate just goes through the path of least resistance. It's simply physics. The opening to help you urinate better stays open when you have an orgasm because that medicine's on board. And so the ejaculate just goes the path of least resistance, which shoots back to your bladder a lot of the times. Ordinarily, when you don't have that medicine on, the bladder neck would be closed off so that when it shoots out, it only has one direction to go. But if it has two openings, it's going to choose whichever one has less of resistance, and that's oftentimes going to be towards the bladder. So that's why retrograde ejaculation happens, and that's why your doctor may have said, hey, you may see less ejaculate. Now, that may really bother some people, and that may be an actual, that may change sensations and cause some issues, and if it does, it does. And the options are change in medication, or maybe try different types of medicines. Um, if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't, and that's great. You're just gonna pee out the ejaculate later. It's not a problem from a pathologic standpoint. It's not something that's gonna create bladder cancer or urethral cancer or gum up the works in your bladder or anything. It's just, you may have some symptoms that bother you about it and you may not. So moving on. The next thing is that all of these medicines, but the data really was done with Flomax, can have a concern during cataract surgery. It's something called floppy iris syndrome. So if you have cataracts, and if you are going to have a surgery, and you have never taken these medicines, then talk to your urologist and talk to your ophthalmologist. And don't, probably don't take them before, but please talk to them. If you have taken them and you have cataracts and you're going to have surgery, that doesn't mean you're gonna have a problem. It's a very rare event, and as long as the ophthalmologist knows about it, there are tools in the operating room that they can use to, to reduce the chances of that problem. It's just something that we've known for a while that can happen but is very rare and may be able to be mitigated during the operation. But talk with your ophthalmologist, talk with your urologist. And that's really it. The medicines are well tolerated. We've had people on them for a long time. I think that there's always information that comes out over years and decades where somebody where somebody says, well, you know, this might be a concern or this might not be, and that might be something that comes up in the future on these. But overall, they're once a day medicines. They do tend to have a pretty rapid onset of help. Um, they are things that people can stop and then go back on if they want to. And then the main side effects really are the lightheadedness and then the retrograde ejaculation. Now, some people will also notice that they might have a little bit of stuffy nose. I hope you get a benefit out of it overall. Thanks for listening to all of this. Send me some questions if I wasn't clear and take this information to your doctor so that you guys can have a better conversation going forward and that time is structured more efficiently. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.